there is something new under the sun. 60 miles north of the bustling metropolis of Tokyo, near quiet Motegi Town, stands a shining new example of the distinctly American form of racetrack, the oval, twin ring Motegi. The Japanese fans have turned out by the thousands for their first up-close look at the world's fastest circuit racers. Michael Andretti, winner of the opening round of the 1998 FedEx Championship Series, is among the favorites, and the green flag is moments away at the inaugural Budweiser 500. The FedEx Championship Series presents the inaugural Budweiser 500 on a blue sky day at Twin Ring Motegi. Hello everyone, I'm Bob Varsha. Weather has been a big part of the story this weekend in Japan. With more on that, here's Jack Aru. Bob, rain yesterday washed out qualifying, so the teams relied on their practice times from the day before. And that was good news for our pole sitter and our outside pole sitter. Now, Jimmy Vassar, no surprise that he's qualified on the pole. He had very fast times, not only in practice, but also in extensive testing here at Twin Ring Montegi. But on the outside of the front row, a big surprise. Young Adrian Fernandez has taken his Pat Patrick prepared machine to the outside of the front row. Now, they're going to try something a little different today. Rather than having the normal three high gears that you would have in an oval car race, what they have done is selected a different gear setting for fourth gear. Why? They feel that it's going to be necessary in heavy traffic to be able to downshift going into turn number three, and Adrian Fernandez should then, in turn, have an advantage and be able to start, initiate, and complete a pass for position before they exit turn four. Gary? Well, Jack, one of those teams that elected to work on race day setup as opposed to a qualifying setup was the Newman Haas team and Michael Andretti. As a consequence, he starts this event in 14th position outside in row seven. But keep in mind, as winner of the season opener at Homestead, he started from back in the pack there as well. It was outside row four from the number eight spot. He's hoping he can duplicate that, of course, today. One other interesting note from row three, Greg Moore, the only wall banging incident of the weekend, and it was huge late Thursday afternoon. Afternoon. Consider this. His car was devastated. His knees jerked back. And if you look over here, you can see how straight the steering wheel normally is. But over here, it has pushed back a full inch from the huge impact as his knees jerked backwards, tore off the bottom of the dash. Amazingly, he was not injured. He's bruised. He's wearing knee pads today. He's extremely sore. He rode off the car, but the car he's in now is the same car that he drove at Miami to a second place finish, just a matter of feet right behind Michael Andretti. All right, thank you, gentlemen. We have many stories to tell you about on this historic day for open wheel racing worldwide. We'll be back in a moment. Yeah, you can stay. But keep your hands to yourself. What you're seeing is amazing because this tire is flat. That's right. Moments ago, it was punctured and lost all air pressure. It's the new Goodyear Aqua Steel Run Flat. If it weren't, this is what could have happened. Instead, the new Aqua Steel drives you up to 50 miles at 55 miles per hour to safety. New Aqua Steel. Only from Goodyear. Goodyear. What's today? Uh, Sunday. Well, what's that? A FedEx truck. Earl, what's FedEx doing making deliveries on Sunday? You think we're the only ones working hard on Sunday? 
Now FedEx delivers on Sunday because the world works seven days a week. Well, back to the grind. Sunday delivery from FedEx. The Budweiser 500. This ABC Sports exclusive brought you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, the official beer of cart. This Bud's for you. Goodyear, innovators of run flat technology. And now FedEx delivers on Sunday because the world works seven days a week. Welcome back. The field is on track, but Christian Fittipaldi is pitting before the green flag ever waves. Here at Twin Ring Motegi, they replace the left front tire, and the Brazilian is back underway. Here's a look at our starting lineup. On the pole, for the fifth time in his career, Jimmy Vassar starting alongside Adrian Fernandez, equaling his best starting position ever. Row two, Gilles DeFerrin and reigning series champion Alex Zanardi. On row three will be Greg Moore, who had that heavy crash on Thursday. He's in a backup car, and Scotsman Dario Franchitti. Row four, Mark Blundell and Andre Ribeiro. On row five will be Brian Herta, fifth fastest in the morning warm-up. And Tony Canan, once again, the highest starting rookie in the field. Row six will be Mauricio Gugelman and Scott Pruitt. On row seven, Walter Salas, replacing the injured Dennis Vitolo, and Michael Andretti, the winner of the season opener in Miami, Florida, two weeks ago. Row eight, Al Unzer Jr. and Paul Tracy, two veterans at mid-pack. Row nine will be Bobby Rahal in his only Motegi start as his last season in the series continues. He'll be next to rookie J.J. Leto. On row 10, Christian Fittipaldi, who just made that quick stop, and Patrick Carpentier. On row 11, Richie Hearn and Brazilian Roberto Moreno. Back on row 12, Max Pappas and Michelle Jourdain Jr. On row 13, Japanese driver Hideshi Matsuda. Great story there. And Elio Castro Neves, one of the rookies in the field. Row 14 will be Arndt Meyer in the only Lola chassis out there and Alex Barron from California. And on the final row, 15, PJ Jones and Hiro Matsushita. Our race is scheduled for 201 laps. With me, a man who has raced often in Japan, Danny Sullivan. Danny, the racers love this new track. Well, it's the state of the art. It's very smooth. They built an incredible place. As you can see, it's very hilly right here. And what they did, they cut the top off of the mountains. They built this incredible one and a half mile track. And as you can see in the right of your screen, lower right, that's the one turns one and two very fast. They're taking it almost wide open. Turns three and four very tight. They're actually down shifting there into that corner. We're going to see a lot of passing in that area. Field now coming up to speed. The front row getting a good jump on row two. We'll see if they give them the green this time around. They do. Jimmy Vassar and Adrian Fernandez lead the field away in the inaugural Budweiser 500. The field is cleanly through turns one and two. By far the faster sequence of corners nearly flat out through there. And Adrian Fernandez has lit the fuse and he is riding a rocket. He's already opened up a big gap on Vassar. To the line they come to end lap one. It is Fernandez, Vassar, Gilles de Ferrin, and Alex Zanardi, your top four. The turns banked at 10 degrees. A very fast track. The pole speed some 217 miles an hour. As you look at Adrian Fernandez, he equaled his best starting position since the U.S. 500 at Michigan two years ago. Bob, there's a lot of questions here because of the practice situation. It was rained out on Friday. A lot of them were working on race setups and some of them were working on qualifying setups. So we're going to have to see what they came up with and who shines during this race. We should also point out that there was very heavy rain on Friday that's probably greened up this racetrack, washed off a lot of the rubber built up in Thursday practice. That changes it a little bit, but this track doesn't have a great groove down in it because this is, of course, the first event here, so it doesn't have years of a groove built up. I'm not so sure making it green uh, with that rain on Friday is going to affect these cars that much. There is Vassar, the series champion two seasons ago, running in second place behind the man in the green and orange car, Adrian Fernandez, then Gilles de Ferret in third. Zanardi in fourth, Greg Moore fifth, Dario Franchitti is sixth. As you see the field streaming across the start-finish line. And Michael Andretti is on the move. He started 14th. He is up to 10th. 
across the bottom of your screen you see the running order with five laps complete the laps go down at about 25 seconds per so this is going to be a very fast race and we anticipate a lot of passing Well, let's also point out that these these teams and drivers have been out here before testing so this isn't completely new to them they didn't just show up here on Wednesday and start turning the wheel and, and going they have had some practice experience here not everybody but most of them have been out here before 14 drivers were here back in November for a group test there's a good look at Vassar running more than a full second now behind the race leader Adrian Fernandez who was enjoying the lead for the first time since the Toronto street course event back in 1996 as you ride with Jimmy Vassar. This is turns three and four, and you can hear him lift. Now, he just lifted. We've heard that a lot of the drivers are actually downshifting here during practice. That's what they've told us. We'll see if uh, that comes into play during the race. Car is heavy with fuel right now. As that fuel load lightens, we'll see how they change in their handling. On board with Michael Andretti, who came from eighth place to win two weeks ago in the season opener at the Miami-Dade Homestead Motorsports Complex in South Florida. No sign of an upshift there, so Michael Andretti using top gear only at this point. Not since A.J. Foyt in a Coyote Ford back in October of 1978 at Silverstone in England has an American-built chassis won a race. You saw Michael Andretti grab a gear there. Now he just downshifted there. Now this could be a handling situation or possibly as the fuel load changes and you heard him just upshift there. Back to the lead now. Adrian Fernandez continues to draw away from Jimmy Vassar. And he puts a lap on Hiro Matsushita. So we're lapping slower runners within the first 10 laps. There's the running order. We'll be back with more from Japan in a moment. We lead the inaugural Budweiser 500 at the Twin Ring Motegi Circuit near Motegi Town, Japan. Bob Harsha, Danny Sullivan with you. Not since Toronto two years ago has this man led a race. He went on to win that event when he was driving for the Tasman team. On board now with Michael Andretti. You see how that onboard camera is already getting oil oh, and rubber. You see right there, he had to lift off a little bit. He got in close behind the car, and it just took the air away from the front end, just moved it a little bit. Michael had to lift out of it. Let's check the speeds at the line. Yellow arrowheads tell you who the top three cars are. Jimmy Vassar with the quickest lap on that last go-round. Now Brian Herta comes through at 208.7 miles per hour. Compare that with the pole setting speed of Jimmy Vassar at 217.964. Bob, once again, we heard Vassar downshift into that corner. You hear his throttle there. He's almost wide open all the way through turns one and two. For the lead, for the lead. Vassar drives right by Fernandez at a remarkable rate of knots. Are you surprised he made that pass so easily, Danny? I am a little bit surprised. Adrian had been running well, but I think Adrian got held up a little bit in traffic. Jimmy was almost wide open through the corner, and he just got to run off. We'll have to see if he can stretch it out and pull away from Adrian. There is Fernandez. Driving as a teammate to Scott Pruitt with Pat Patrick Racing in 1998 in the FedEx Championship. Vassar continues to work traffic. Fernandez at the upper right of your screen being followed very closely now by the third place Reynard Honda of Gilles de Ferran. Our pictures are coming to us from the host broadcaster for this event. NTV in Japan. Vassar right up behind Michelle Jordan in the green car before ducking out of the draft and passing. And DeFerrin has gotten by Fernandez, who drops back to third. So the first two cars now are Honda powered. And as you might imagine, this is an enormously important race for Honda. In fact, this entire facility is owned by Honda. 
Bob, I've got to believe that something's going a little bit wrong with Adrian's car. His balance is going away, some, some kind of problem. He's dropped too much ground in two laps to have it still be perfect the way it is running in the early laps. Aaron moving forward, back on board with Michael Andretti, passing rookie Tony Kanaan. That is for position. Well, he hasn't passed him yet. Side by side, down into one they go. And now Michael Andretti continues his march toward the front. This is the kind of thing we saw from Michael at Homestead two weeks ago. Bob, you got to believe if he had a good car at Homestead, he was more than likely going to have a good car here. Quite similar tracks, turns one and two are very similar to Miami. It's a smooth racetrack. They weren't going to lose anything just shipping these cars out to Japan. Now Andretti challenges the red machine of Alex Zanardi, the reigning series champion, and he passed with ease. I wonder if Zanardi's car is completely healthy. Of course, the questions are all about setup, as you see Michael in seventh place. Goodyear tires working for Andretti. Only two Goodyear cars qualified in the top ten. All the rest on Firestone, a part of the Firestone Bridgestone rubber empire. That is a Japanese company, and of course, this is a very big race for them as well, with a lot of fans and then guests in the stands. Now you see a lot of empty spaces in the grandstands. This facility will hold over 130,000 people but at this debut event, they have capped the ticket sales at 55,000 in order to ensure that they can handle that crowd. There is Michael's wife, Leslie. The facility is beautiful as you see Michael Andretti's progress through the field. But access to Twin Ring Botegi is very problematic. There is a two-lane road, and as you can imagine, it is very congested with the crowds coming in and out of this track. Back to Jimmy Vassar, race leader. Perhaps the most experienced driver at this racetrack. He came here for the ribbon cutting and drove one of the target Chip Ganassi racing machines around the track for a few ceremonial laps. Then he was back for the group test in November. The upper right of your screen, Elio Castro Neves driving for Tony Bettenhausen. the back stretch goes the race leader Vassar Adrian Fernandez sliding further and further back across the start finish line goes Jimmy Vassar let's go down to the pit lane to Jack Aroot to see if we can learn more about Adrian Fernandez situation Jack Guys, we've checked with Adrian Fernandez's pit crew, and there is no problem with Fernandez, despite the fact that he's faded back to third position. In fact, this is a little bit by design. He likes the way the car's set up, but he and the crew have determined that it's a long race, and they don't want to press things, at least not at this point. I don't know, Bob. That, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting strategy, and, of course, Jim McGee's one of the sharper guys out there on that. They obviously, they're running these cars so wide open, that uh, they want to probably save the equipment. This is a 500 kilometer race, 312 miles, a uh, long ways to go, and uh, we'll see if that strategy plays out. Jimmy Vassar, the race leader in the red car, bottom of your screen. Fernandez has another reason for taking this race fairly conservatively in the middle laps. He was very sick last night. We were told that he was up Sick to his stomach through most of the night. He is not well rested, and his stamina also has to be a question today. It is a cool day, so the driver should be fairly comfortable. But when you've had an upset stomach facing a 500-kilometer race, 312 miles roughly, as Danny mentioned, that is a long day's work. As you see the gap between Vassar and the second-place car of Gilles de Ferrand, out to almost three seconds. Both the first and second place cars are Reynard chassis with Honda Power. The difference between them, Vassar is on Firestone tires, DeFerrin on Goodyear's. Now the race leader comes up to put a lap on J.J. Leto, driving for Carl Hogan. Bob, something that we should mention here is that we've talked about shifting on an oval. 
And normally on an oval track, you just have a top gear in there and you're running around, do a little braking with your left foot and back on the gas. But as we saw with the map of this circuit, it's very fast in one and two, almost wide open, but quite a bit slower and they have to get on the brakes quite heavy down here in turns three and four. So what they do is they downshift a little and with the sequential gearbox, it's quite easy to happen. On board with Alex Zanardi. That's Max Pappas and one of the Toyota-powered entries up ahead. And here comes Tony Kanan around the outside. That drops the reigning FedEx champion back into 10th spot. Zanardi started fourth. He's going backwards. Zanardi not among those 14 drivers who came here back in November. But he would have important setup information from his teammate, Jimmy Vassar. The two work very well together. Right now, Zanardi not having much luck here at Twin Ring. Bob, I think that's not a knowledge of the track situation because this is just a four-corner oval. But what it is is that he's not happy with his setup. He's had enough running here. Uh, he knows the track well enough. He just doesn't have the setup that he's comfortable with. Rumors are swirling that Zanardi, at the end of his contract this year, is headed back to Formula One with Honda Power in 1999. Oh, a car on the left headed for the pits. Andre Ribeiro with the Marlboro Penske team as Alex Zanardi stays on the racetrack. On the left is the pit exit and warm-up lane. The drivers cannot re-enter the racetrack till they get back here. There's Ribeiro headed for the Penske pits. This is a bit early. The crew wandering around. Gary Gerald is down there. Gary, what can you tell us? Problems for Andre Ribeiro is going to result in a wing, a nose wing change. You can see that the left front side is drooping. There's a bend of contact or the side plate has torn away. The spare nose is ready to go into place. But all of this coming under green. Already the old damaged nose is off. The fresh nose is headed for the front of the car and the change will be completed in a matter of seconds, but it's got to be so frustrating for Andre Ribeiro. Ribeiro pitted from seventh place, so he was having another good run. And Bob, when you pit under a green situation like that on an oval where they're running around here in 25 seconds, you're losing a tremendous amount of ground there. He'll go down a couple laps at least. Jimmy Vassar, the race leader, picking up $25 a lap for the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. The house charity of Target Chip Ganassi Racing. Clear track in front of him. We'll be back with more of the Budweiser 500 after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The Budweiser 500 continues from Twin Ring Motegi. Jimmy Vassar on the lead, followed by Gilles DeFerrin. Eladzer Jr. has moved all the way up to fifth, and now Vassar heads for the pit lane. And boy, that was a little close. You see the car, he dove right in front of him. That car was obviously coming out of the pits as he was coming in. This is the beginning of our fuel window, so we should see lots of pit activity. With a race leader coming in now, I would expect some of the other front-running cars will come in as soon as they can. On the 60-mile-an-hour pit lane speed limit, Vassar heads for the pits. Gary Gerald awaits him. Race leader Jimmy Vassar being waved into position. Hits his marks perfectly. They report the car has been handling beautifully, not anticipating any changes. Routine service waiting for the full complement of the field. And Vassar showing up just over 12 seconds. Like one of the Forsyth cars pitted in front of Jimmy Vassar. Staying below the white line as he accelerates up to speed. There's Michael Andretti pitting. Quick drink. Everything looks routine. Being held. Oh, and now he stopped. Oh, Christian Fittipaldi. Now that was close. That was close, but that was great pit work because his team obviously looked up and saw Christian coming down, said, stop, hold on, and, and then let him go. Jill DeFerrin, who would have assumed the lead on Vassar's pit stop, but he too came around to pit. And now he accelerates back up to speed. On the back stretch, he'll get back up on the racing line. Oh, 
Zanardi pitting. More traffic in the pits. Gary Gerald. Alex Zanardi, fastest in the final warm-up session this morning, struggling with a loose handling race car. So we expect it. We're now seeing wing changes up front. Already the car is down off the jacks, but the tire That was Walter Salas in the Peyton coin car. Almost touched with Alex Zanardi as Zanardi went for the pitch. You also saw Al Unzer Jr. pit and leave as the target Chip Ganassi Racing Crew worked on Alex Zanardi. Now what Gary said, of course, the car was loose, so they just made a little wing adjustment right there in the front. What they do is they take some front wing out, meaning turn it, turn it down, give it a little less downforce on the front to stabilize the car. Once again, our picture is coming to us from the host broadcaster, NTV of Japan. And this is their first visit to this racetrack, as it is for us. Zanardi will try to work his way forward once again. As you see, his teammate, Jimmy Vassar, continues to lead on board now with a Alex Zanardi. And now to Jimmy Vassar. Coming up to pass Hiro Matsushita, one of two Japanese drivers in this field. Matsushita will bring his career to a close following the Rio 400 coming up in a few weeks. We also have Hideshi Matsuda in this field, his third ever start in the series. The other two were the 1994 and 95 Indianapolis 500s. 1993, Matsuda was a television broadcaster at the Speedway. And boy, you really got to see the speed differential there as Jimmy dove underneath that car. That's where they go in under braking there. Unbelievable how fast they're moving. Little downshift, and away he goes. That was Roberto Moreno in the white car that Jimmy Vassar just went by. Patrick Carpentier in the blue and white machine coming up behind race leader Vassar. Carpentier is a lap down. All of the equipment you see here, including that yellow rescue truck, all of the timing and scoring equipment, literally tons of equipment was brought here on three FedEx jumbo jets early this week. 58 race cars, and each team brought nearly four tons, actually nearly five tons of extra equipment. A massive logistical operation. You see the gap over five seconds from Vassar to Fernandez in second place. Fernandez holding up well, it would appear, despite all that sickness he suffered through last night. Vassar has been the quickest man thus far at this racetrack. In fact, through Thursday's practice, he and his teammate Alex Zanardi. Oh, oh a big wiggle that? there. See that wiggle? Now that's uh, under braking right in there, and that might have been when he grabbed the gear. Let's not forget that what happened with Greg Moore on Thursday in that crash was that he went in there and he downshifted and he went from six instead of to fifth. He actually grabbed second gear, locked up the rear tires and spun him off in the wall. Of course, with a sequential gearbox, you can do that because it's not the standard H pattern shifter. That was Carpentier going by, not a pass for position. Jimmy Vassar remains the leader. We'll be back. South Carolina or perhaps the Gateway Oval where we'll be racing in late May on the FedEx Championship Series. Two very different sets of turns. One and two, very fast, nearly flat out for these cars. Three and four, much slower. Drop a gear, do some braking, and dive in. Michael Andretti has marched all the way to second place from his starting position in 14th. Al Unzer Jr., his rival for winningest active driver in the series right now, has also moved forward. Little Al who started 15th, is now 5th. We saw a move like that with Little Al at Miami. Remember, he moved up through the field, unfortunately had a gearbox failure, and put himself out of the uh, point situation. Checking the speeds at the line. There's the race leader, Jimmy Vassar. Watch for the yellow arrowheads that indicate fastest lap. That last time around, Vassar, Andretti, Fernandez, just what you might expect as they run first, second, and third. Now, Alenzer Jr. clocks in. He is still quickest at 207.486 miles per hour. Bob, look at those speeds, though. They're all right in there together. Those top six guys, 
all 207, 206 now. Fernandez dropped down to a 204. That could have actually been a traffic situation where he had to get around a slower car. Same for Alex Zanardi, running under 200 miles an hour. As you look at Adrian Fernandez, here's Hideshi Matsuda, one of the two Japanese drivers we talked about earlier. And Allenzer Jr. going around him. 